Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me. So my name is Otto, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Speechly. I'm a serial entrepreneur, and I've been passionate about artificial intelligence for over two decades already. So I hope everybody in this session knows Speechly beforehand. But if not, here's a quick summary. Speechly was founded in 2016 by voice industry veterans who had been building Siri at Apple and Alexa at Amazon. We have built our own speech recognition and natural language understanding technology, and we have several patents for our work. You might know us from our work with reactive voice user interfaces. And we've been extremely bullish with this space, and we've been actually challenging the status quo dominated by smart speakers and voice assistants. And we believe that the true revolution that voice technology will bring is yet to surface. And it won't happen in smart speakers or voice assistants, but it will actually happen on everyday websites, everyday applications, everyday devices. And our technology enables a novel approach for building multimodal voice UIs that typically can solve any user problems five to 10 times faster. So here's an Looking example from the e-commerce space. Sneakers from Adidas, and actually Puma. No, no, sorry, I mean Nike, in color white, no, actually black. And can you sort by price? I, I'm size 11, by the way. So as you could see in the example, the graphical user interface updated in real time while the user was speaking, making the experience intuitive and smooth. And our technology is widely adopted by the most innovative companies in this space, out of which many are present here today at Voice Summit. You can find more examples, demos, testimonials from our website, from our YouTube channel. So I'd encourage you to go check them out. So what makes all of this possible? Um, it's our unique technology. Our technology is extremely accurate because it adapts to the domain-specific language and also to the domain-specific acoustics. And it also processes speech in a streaming manner, meaning that it does both speech recognition and natural language understanding in a real-time way, so that when the user is speaking, meaning is extracted in real time. And what this enables is a significantly faster event-based feedback loop. So this means that when the user speaks something, an event is triggered. And this event, in turn, triggers then an action that happens in the user interface. And this is the secret sauce for building reactive voice user interfaces, like the one you saw in the previous example. So during Q1 this year, we participated in Y Combinator, which is the most respected startup accelerator in the world. And during this time, we started exploring the most interesting use cases where our existing technology could be applied. And during this time, we were contacted by several companies who had built experiences where users interact with each other by talking over audio, over video, as avatars in the metaverse. And they had a common problem. How do we ensure that our experiences are safe? How do we moderate this? And what we realized was that actually, our event-based feedback loop framework that we had built for reactive voice UIs is exactly, it's perfectly suited for solving this problem too. So when the user speaks to another user, an event is triggered, which then triggers an action to the user. And what makes our technology even more suitable for solving this problem is the fact that you can run it on device or on premise. And the key strengths of our technology for this use case is speed, privacy, and accuracy. Now, in the remaining of this presentation, I will focus on these three topics, and I will share what we have learned in those topics when it comes to voice moderation. So speed, privacy, and accuracy. And I will also share an interesting case example of one of our clients working in this space. I hope you will appreciate it. So starting from speed. Speed can be really critical in uh, detecting harmful content online. So consider, for example, uh, the Buffalo shootings. It took Twitch two minutes to actually cut down the live stream of the shootings that were broadcasted in their platform. You think that it's not a long time, it's pretty fast, right? But it wasn't fast enough uh, to prevent a viral uh, spreading of those videos to the wide public. 
What if that could have been done in like two seconds? Maybe that wouldn't have happened. And when we talk to people working in this field, it seems that many of the people are still actually building solutions using the non-streaming APIs. And the reason for this one is that typically the streaming APIs aren't accurate enough. And also many of the streaming APIs actually do have some network latencies, meaning that the connection will be cut. That's, this results in latencies of multiple minutes. And Speechly is actually designed from the ground up to do real-time streaming use cases where the latency is very low and where there is a minimum impact on accuracy. I'll talk about this soon. And also because it's run on device, the network timeouts aren't relevant. So when it comes to privacy, privacy has actually become a key showstopper in terms of a wider voice technology adoption and innovation. And there has been several major backlashes recently in this space. Especially the big tech companies have run into a lot of trouble with their obscure data collection practices. And at the same time, uh, this has impacted the consumer attitudes and behaviors. We have seen this in some of the data on our industry. Regulation is tightening, and not only regulation, new regulation is introduced, and the interpretations are becoming stricter. Online abuse prevention, kid safety has become a household discussion topic. And it's very probable that regulation in this space will very soon um, strengthen heavily. Now, when it comes to privacy concerns, there's one aspect that impacts privacy significantly. And that's how do you deploy your speech technology? So in the traditional cloud-based speech recognition models, when the end user speaks, uh, the audio goes to the customer who's provided the application for the end user, but also a third party vendor who then processes the audio. This, rational, this normally creates some, um, some issues and questions regarding privacy. What is Google really doing with our data? Now, the other approach to deploy the technology is to run it on premise. And in this case, the end user's audio only goes to the client, but not a third party vendor. So that means that the end user only needs to trust the platform owner of who, whose product it is you, they are using. This already alleviates most of the privacy concerns. And the third way to deploy voice, de deploy voice technology is to deploy it in the end user's device. And what this does is that actually audio is never leaving the end user's device, meaning that the, the end user doesn't need to trust even the platform owner. And this typically totally removes all the privacy concerns. And traditionally, when you talk about on-device speech recognition, it's typically done with smaller models that are less performant. And this typically leads into a trade-off between privacy and accuracy. This trade-off can actually be avoided by running cloud-grade speech recognition models right in the end user's device, and like we do at Speechly. So accuracy. This has been the centerpiece of the speech recognition-related discussion for many, many years. But being accurate on average, it's not enough. What really counts is how accurate you are for domain-specific language. So let's take the example of voice moderation. Even if you have an amazing average accuracy, but your accuracy for the F word or the N word is not good, the end-to-end -end solution will not work. And accuracy is oftentimes measured with word error rate. But it's not actually the holy grail either. And what really matters for the end-to-end -end solution uh, success is recall and false positive rates and how to combine those. So recall refers to the ability of the system to pick up the instances that it's trying to, uh, to find, how many of those it's able to pick up. And false positive rate um, describes how many of the, the um, cases that the system flags are inaccurately flagged. So you want the recall to be really high, and you want the false positive rates to be very low. So in the voice moderation example, if recall is low, that means that you have no guarantees that your system has been able to pick up the system, the, the cases from the data that you want it to pick up. So in practice, if you want to be sure, you still need to process all of the data manually. Now, even if recoil would be 100%, if there is a significant amount of false positives, that means that then there is 
typically user dissatisfaction because they get flagged of things that they did not do. And the ones of you who are familiar with machine learning, how that works, there is typically a trade-off between accuracy and false positive rates. And different use cases actually require different ways to solve this trade-off. And the only way for you to get a machine learning powered speech recognition solution that is optimized to the right way to support your end user use case is actually for you to build a custom model. And this is something that we at Speech do for our clients. So let me tell you about an interesting use case example. This comes from the metaverse space. So our client has developed a VR multiplayer sports game and a uh, integral part of the gaming experience is the ability to speak with other players in the same uh, game. And the game attracts a pretty young user base, typically teenagers. And what this has resulted in is that the culture in the game is that there's a lot of profanities, there's bullying, there's racial language, and this is a major risk for our client they are pretty much being threatened to be kicked off the Oculus App Store, which is their main distribution channel. So this is an existential threat for this company. And the amount of users is already quite big. And this means that uh, you have to uh, employ a automated voice moderation solution. Manual approaches would not work for these scales, these volumes of audio data. And this is why they turn to speech. And what we've done is that we run our spoken language understanding technology in the Oculus Quest 2 headset uh, to automatically moderate those end user discussions. And to do this, we have created a on-device model that is 70 megabytes on, in size, and it runs cloud-grade speech recognition directly on the Oculus Quest 2 VR headset in real time. And if you compare this to the much-hyped Whisper model, it's around 10 times smaller than the Whisper model. And it does it in real time. And it also does not impact the gaming experience uh, on Oculus. Now, when you compare the results here, you can see that with our model that is 10 times smaller than the Whisper, Whisper model and runs on device, does it in real time, we have actually been able to generate better results than OpenAI's Whisper, uh, which has been trained with the largest audio data set ever done so far, more accurate than Azure, which is Azure's most accurate cloud model, which is benefiting from both Microsoft and Nuance Teams innovations in the speech recognition space, and Google's premium, the most expensive and fancy cloud speech recognition model. And we are continuously adapting the model to our clients, so every week these numbers here get better for our clients. And the benefits for our clients for choosing this is accuracy. In this use case, high recall and low false positive rates is what matters, and that's what they got. Privacy, kids' voices are always sensitive. By keeping the audio data in the end user's device, privacy concerns are alleviated. And speed, processing this speech in real time actually enables the voice moderation features to react in real time to bad behavior, undesired behavior. And cost. Running the models on device actually allows uh, you to process the massive amounts of audio data in a cost-effective way. So before I end my presentation, there's one more thing that I want to share with you. So starting from today, you can directly download our cloud-grade and on-device models in three different formats from our dashboard and command line interface tool. So you can easily compare the different models in the cloud before choosing which models you want to proceed. And you have the full flexibility to actually choose what is the optimal base model for your use case, which we will further adapt for you and guarantee extreme accuracy for your specific use case. So you can go to speechly.com today and try it out. So thank you, everybody. If you want to know something about running cloud-grade speech recognition on device, feel free to reach out to me. You can find my contact details on the slide, or you can find me here at the conference for the whole time at our booth. Thank you.